Hickok 45 here, and I are a cowboy. What'd I tell you? I are a cowboy, and he ain't no more, right? <laughs> yes, this looks like a cowboy gun. It is, even though it's a little bit of a wimpy cowboy gun. It's in 22 long rifle right now. It's a Colt Frontier Scout we're going to talk about. Pretty neat. And guess what? It is empty. Dropped on an empty case of old guns. Because you know somebody who likes old guns, don't you? <laughs> I'm going to put it back in my holster. Yeah, I feel like a cowboy today when I have a firearm like this, what, whatever the caliber is, whatever the power factor. Now, this is not uh, <laughs> from Federal, and it won't fit in this 22 I have, but I brought this out just for a little bit of comparison, okay? So we're, uh, we're anxious to get going and shoot some more with this thing because it is a Western-style firearm, and I grew up a cowboy. I still am a cowboy, and I don't have to tell you that, do I? Now, I'm, I'm going to treat this just like my Colt Single Action Army. It is a Colt Single Action. It's the uh, Frontier Scout. Got the old box. This one was made in uh, 68. 1968. Pretty neat. And uh, so, yeah, it's just in the box. I'll send it back to them but they're, they're for their site, but uh, auction site. I put the target in it too usually when we borrow a gun from them. Uh, so, uh, yeah, 68 and uh, half cock. And that's how you get the cases out because you want to reload these 22s, right? You want to save your cases. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Someone probably does reload them. So, uh, yeah, it operates just like an old Colt single action or even the very first Ruger single actions. You go to half cock and then the cylinder will turn and you can, you know, work the ejector and get the cases out. And that's why, uh, again, uh, if you're at the range, uh, uh, how many times am I going to have to explain this, I guess? But uh, you can load six in these, of course, and, and pick them up and fire them. Many of us have done cowboy action shooting, and we even carry these things around, maybe our property. Or maybe you carry one of these for self-defense. I don't know. But it's, it's not as wise to carry it with six in it with a hammer down on a, on a live round. And uh, so we just stay in the habit of loading uh, fire. Sometimes people come up with this idea. They tell me even that they... They let the hammer down. What is? They let the hammer down between cases. Ah, oh, man. I, and you can do that with some of the percussion guns, or maybe some of the other brands. I, I am not going to do that with a Colt. There's no notch there, and you're really, yeah, screwing up the action. I just don't do that. I just load five. So enough on that. So yeah, this is the uh, the Colt Frontier. You may not have been aware of this firearm. Uh, I have seen them gun shows. I, I have relatives that have one or two. I know and. Uh, I've been tempted on them many times. They came in a lot of variations. Uh, this is, uh, as I said, 68. The first ones came out in 57. It was 1957, not 2057. Okay, 1957. And uh, the first ones were kind of a two-tone, a duo-tone, as they called it. They had an aluminum alloy frame, like this one does, more or less, but they were not black. So if you see a picture of one, to me, they're a little odd-looking. Maybe, maybe not to you. And uh, I think uh, Ruger made one kind of like that in 55. It was an aluminum alloy frame and it, it had the two-tone going, you know, with it too. But I like this better and uh, we just came a little bit later. And it's 22. That's the, the big thing, okay? It's the little bitty brother of the Colt single action and these big 45 cartridges, right? You see the difference? Let's open up in case you didn't notice. You see the... Uh, <laughs> the chamber on this one okay for new shooters it's a little bit smaller than what the uh, cowboys carried or the uh, soldiers carried back in 1873 and four and on up to 1890s okay and even after right so this one's in cha chambered in 22 it's a smaller also uh configuration of it it's not a, not dramatically but it is smaller i forget the percentage you know but you know like 75 percent or something and, uh, and I think most of them were in like four and five eighths or something, four and a half inch barrel. And they appear to be a little bit longer. They appear to be like this one because the ejector rod housing doesn't go all the way out as it does on the uh, uh, four and three quarter Colt. Well, actually the barrels stops here. The ejection uh, housing is the same length. It's just the barrels cut off on the four and three quarters. And since this one extends also, it, it kind of has that look, doesn't it? 
So uh, it looks like a cowboy gun, like your favorite cowboys used. Let me load it up here while I'm yakking. And uh, that's why it, they came out with it, okay, in the 50s. We've talked about that before. And I also want to thank, before we go further, is silencercentral.com, great supporter of the channel. Uh, I couldn't get a suppressor that would work on these or would, would have one, but, <laughs> but we appreciate their support. You've seen a lot of suppressor activity lately, and you'll see some more, and not to mention the Glock 18. Uh, so they're a real, real cool supporter, a lot of help we get from them. We appreciate them. Uh, maybe uh, we can get a suppressor for, for one of these. You think? I mean, they do it in the movies, don't they? Don't they have suppressors and silencers on revolvers? And it seems to work. Yeah. And anything you see in Hollywood, it's got to be correct and <laughs> right. Well, and speaking of Hollywood, you know, Colt, uh, I've told you all this before. I hope you've been listening to me. I hope you listen well to me and you take notes, right? Yeah, you know, baby, you better not. But, uh, you know, Colt quit making the single action. They started in 73, 1873. And then during World War II, there were other firearms that needed to be, you know, focused on. And so they didn't make this, they quit making the single action uh, up through the 40s. And then in the 50s, they started up again, but it really wasn't without some pressure. It was, uh, it was the Western movies and people falling in love with the Western movies and, and TV series. And, uh, you know, you had Gunsmoke and all those, Rifleman, you know a lot of those series that came about. And people were wanting single action revolvers like the Cowboys carried. And guess who came, who, who was uh, first with the Mosis was Ruger. That's when they started making the uh, Blackhawk. And uh, I think in 45 was the first one, or 357, 30, I don't know. But they came out, I forget now, my history on that, but they came out early, like 50, early 50s or 1950 with, uh, with, with the Blackhawk. And then they came out with a single six, which was a 22 cowboy gun, peacemaker type firearm. That was in 53, I think, okay? And of course, everybody loved them because everybody even then couldn't afford to shoot 45 Colt or big cartridges and didn't even want to necessarily. 22 has always been very popular. And so we had Ruger with a single six. Now, I don't own one. You've seen one here. Uh, my buddy, I think we've done his too. Maybe I'll get it back and compare. But uh, so then that put the pressure on Colt. So they came out with one, 57. All right, somebody had to have one to shoot 10 cans like that. That old propane tank. Did I miss it? Yeah, I did. How did I do that? How about this two liter? <laughs> but stop sign click all right so you know again they're single action the the negative the downside of a single action uh, revolver like this of any caliber is you get five or six shots usually okay there are a few in various configurations you can find that may hold a couple more but they're six shooters you know or five shooters and uh the lure the attraction is what it's the design you know, the simplicity of it, the history, the movies, and just everything. Uh, everybody wants to be a cowboy sometime in his or her life, right? Cowgirl, right? Cow person. And this lets you do it. I'll load it up again here with 22s. Then I might switch the cylinder on you. And she's something a little more powerful. <laughs> now, let's see, what else did you want to know about these? I think they sold, you know, uh, like I said, uh, single six from Ruger came out in 53. And so that really put the pressure on Colt. So they, they brought out the, the big boys, you know, the Colts uh, there in, what, 55, 56. And then they came out with this in 57. And, uh, and of course, some of them have two cylinders, Magnum and regular long rifle. But uh, the, uh, everybody was happy to see Colt bring these back, of course, and especially this, because it was like the, the old Colt single action. A lot of the Rugers, are, they're well made. They're probably better made than Ruger, than Colt, okay? Ruger's probably better made than Colt, I'll say that. Uh, stronger, perhaps, and everything. Better sights. But the appeal for these is the fact they have the same old fixed sights. <laughs> Maybe you can't hit anything with them. But uh, I don't know, just the lines, they were truly in the uh, spirit of the Colt single action. And, you know, I mean, yeah, you can put big adjustable sights. You can put a red dot on one of these and shoot it better. But uh, it was very appealing, and it is to me, to have the same configuration with terrible sights, right? 
and so it was very popular. And also, they were able to cut the price. I, was, I read that the single six sold for around 50 bucks. No, no, it sold for around 57 or 58, and this one sold for like 49 or 50 dollars. And so, you know, it, it sold pretty well because it beat the Ruger on price, and it was a Colt and all that kind of thing. But now the Ruger did very, very well, and still does. And, and, and of course, they discontinued this in uh, 86. A single six is still cranking in all sorts of configurations. Part of that's just Colt, the company. You know, I mean, as I speak, you know, we've learned they've been bought by CZ and everything, and they've just struggled through a lot of their recent uh, history. Maybe they'll get better, who knows. Now that they're owned by uh, somebody else. All right. And I think I have one left for that bowling pin. <laughs> And right now, it should be empty. Yeah. Okay. So, and you've got these fine uh, uh, fake sag grips on here. Aren't those beautiful? <laughs> hey, what do you expect for 50 bucks, you know, 1968, uh, you know, aluminum alloy. It was, it was designed and made so that anybody, the average person, could buy one of these and have fun with it, right? Uh, so... It's nothing like a, a lot of their full-size single actions, of course. It's a 22. You can e more easily make it out of alloy, and you don't need the strength, and then the plastic. Grips are just expensive. You get stag grips. My gosh, a set of stag grips now costs more than most firearms. So, anyway, it is what it is, and it's pretty nice. It feels good. You got the same feel of a Colt. Even though I think the grips are more like the same size, even though the, the gun is scaled down a little bit. Let's change the 22 mag, okay? And uh, with this one, it's got the same look, the cross pin and everything, but it actually is a screw instead of a push button. And so what you want to do, half cock, we are empty, of course. So half cock and then take the screw out. And I don't mind that, to tell you the truth. It's such a positive thing. It's just like the old black powder frames doesn't bother me it wouldn't bother me if Colt never did get away from uh, this method of taking the cylinder out because yeah, it you know oops, point at John it has a screw you know in the black powder frames that go right in there to hold the base pin in and I mean how often do you take the cylinder out if you're going to take it out there's no problem to have a screwdriver really generally to clean it what are we going to do okay it's on half cock so we take that out and we pop in the mag it's even written on there 22 mag, that's how I knew, see? And uh, you would always find out in a hurry if you tried to put a 22 mag round. Let's do that, one, two. 22 mag round in the 22 long rifle. See, it won't fit, it's a little bigger. And a little longer and a little bigger, a little fatter, okay? So, for those of you who were gonna ask, you know, would the Magnum round blow up that cylinder? No, because you can't get it in there. Okay. This thing seems to be, oh, fit well. I noticed that's interesting. It goes all the way back. And when I first did that, took it apart the first time, I thought, what's the deal there? Is that, got a, is that a safety like on some of the new Uberties and that kind of thing? But it's not. It just, you just have to stop it. Put the screw in. And the first time I did this, I forgot which side it went in. And I, I had a little trouble getting it in. And as I often do i have to figure things out the the hard way the slow way right so uh we'll get this back in there humble fingers and shoot a little 22 magnum uh like i said they made these up until uh, 86 in all kinds of configurations they had a butt line uh, especially i think i've got that pin in the way it needs to go a little bit further forward yeah yeah there we go, up there. And uh, now the and there's different series of them. There's a Q series and a K series and all this kind of thing. And it has to do with when they were made and and what they were made of. And I think the last series, if I'm not mistaken, was the one that because I have seen several of those and have come close to buying them. That is very much like the Colt single action. There, I think it's an all steel frame and gun, and it's a color case hardened, and you really can't tell the difference other than the size of it. It is really a just just like that gun, except in a smaller configuration like this one. And uh, 
I've come close on those because they don't cost, at least they, in the past, they haven't, they don't cost anything close to what the actual cold single actions cost. Uh, but again, it's a five or six shot 22 revolver, a little more awkward to load and unload. One thing we like about 22s typically is they're, you just go through rounds and load them up quickly and all that. So let's put some magnums in here. Let's see if this is magnums. Is this going to be anything like a 500 magnum, you reckon? Skip one. What do magnums? Nothing to laugh at, I'll tell you, if you've ever shot them. Uh, so it's a pretty flexible little firearm, isn't it? All right, these will be a little bit louder. So make sure you got your ears on tight, folks. Let's, uh, you know that two liter got uh, somehow, I think I was shooting this the other day. I think I got a little shrapnel in it. Let's finish it off. <laughs> well, just jump right up there, buddy. <laughs> See if it'll knock a bowling pin off. Yeah, let me try these other orange two liters. All right, now I might have a little trouble. <laughs> what did I tell you? Yep. All right. Did he fire four or did he fire five? Now, I don't reload tw uh, 22 Magnum, any of you all. So this is just more gravel for sure. Okay. Now, a firearm like this, uh, for a lot of people who are kind of borderline single actions anyway, uh, you don't even like westerns maybe, it's not going to have a whole lot of appeal to you. Uh, but if not, i got to wonder, what is wrong with you? <laughs> you don't like westerns and, and these sorts of firearms. But uh, you might just rather have a bigger caliber if you're going to have a, a western style firearm peacemaker of course or you might just really want adjustable sights because you want one if you're going to have a single action you want to be able to hunt with it and be able to reach out because a lot probably more single actions are sold uh, with adjustable sights than without i would guess and you know for hunting and maybe in 44 magnum or okay i messed up i advanced the cylinder so we'll figure out where their live rounds are and where the empty light rounds are. All right, this is good. Good training. Good training. Okay. Now, it's not good if you're going to carry this for self defense. You sort of want to know when that empty chamber is going to come up. All right. Let's go on out to the gong. One, two. Now, I've not shot at any distance. Let's see if we can hear it if it hits it. Yep, that was it. Got it, got it, I heard that. Let's try uh, that buffalo. Let's try the ram, we might hear it. Well, I don't know which would make more noise. Let's try the ram. Yeah, I don't know, I couldn't see it. I think it went high. Yeah, I saw that. Well, bring it down a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. And that's one of the problems. I believe that was five, right? Uh, firing uh, 22 in general, sometimes you can't tell when you hit something. And with 22 Magnum, it's louder. It gets there faster. And so you've still got the sound of the bullet uh, or the cartridge, you know, kind of interfering with the ping of the steel because it's not going to be a big, loud ping anyway. I had that, that problem is really uh, exaggerated with the uh, little five seven FNs. There we go. We'll shoot one more round, okay? And let me think. Is there anything I have forgotten? This is a cool box. It's always neat to have the box with the firearm. It goes back to 1968, and uh, you know, just <laughs> it fits right in there. That's kind of an interesting way to make a box. You know, now. We you don't see that, you know, the cylinder fits in there, just right, the Frontier Scout. It's a <laughs> pretty nifty little little package. So, uh, anyway, I'll take six more and I'm going to let you go. I've uh, told you about the pricing on it. Uh, now, these things, I mean, I mean today, they're going to sell for whatever, 700 or 1,000 bucks or something. You know, they're, they're not cheap, but in back in the day, you know, around $50, you know, 68 you could buy one of these things. So, uh, and, and you can just imagine how popular this would be, uh, you know, right in the, during the heyday, in the 60s, you know, even, 
still the heyday of the westerns uh, to a large extent and uh, hey for me it's still the heyday of the westerns <laughs> i i uh i get this westerns channel and you know really you know with amazon prime and every all the various channels and things we all have access to uh you know it's really the heyday for anything you want it to be right <laughs> I mean, it's, it's kind of an interesting world. It, that's the nice thing about the modern world, isn't it? You can, there I did it again. You can, uh, you can just conjure up any kind of movie, a series you want to. It's all out there somewhere. So I'll just do a little more training. I'm gonna let that down easy because it's probably down on a live round. But we're on the range, it's pointing down range. Uh, yeah, so again, a heyday of the Westerns though. And many of you can't really fully appreciate that unless you've got some gray hair. Uh, but, you know, there were just all week long, there were, there were like, I, I saw a special recently. It was like 17 hours worth of Westerns or something like that every week, you know, series and, and that sort of thing. It was more so than there are cop shows now. And then of course you just had three channels. And so everybody watched them, right? So that's why so many people from my generation grew up to be cowboys. Uh, let's try that orange two liter. We can't leave it, can we? Let's magnemize it. Now we got to got a dead round somewhere here. An empty chamber. That wasn't it. That wasn't either. Uh, that was it. A little flinch, right? There we go. We got him. So I got two rounds left, and you know where it ought to go? Right on the cowboy. Yep, the last round on the Cowboy. So that was five, you saw me put five in, so we know we're empty. So the, the Cold Scout Frontier, you may not have been aware of it, now you are. Your life is complete, you know all about it. And uh, just another option out there, many of you are interested in, you really do like the, the Westerns, I joke about that, but a lot of young people these days just really get into them. And, uh, you know, there are 22 caliber cowboy guns, you know, out there, and this is one of them. Uh, again, no, no fixed size, no adjustable, well, fixed size, no adjustable sights. And, uh, but it's like the real Colt Peacemaker. That's what it's got going for it. And they don't make them now, okay? Uh, they quit again in eight, 1986 on this. And, uh, there are some uh, some of the other companies and replica companies, I think, Italian companies that make, I believe, something like this. I'm not sure I'm drawing a blank right now. I hadn't even thought about it. But uh, it was very popular in, in the day, just like the secure or single six was and still is. Okay, so anyway, maybe I'll get uh, my buddy's single six and we'll do a little comparison or something here. I don't know. Another excuse to shoot it. So glad you came by, and uh, we really appreciate your support. And we'll probably see you the next time you come out and watch us. Life is good. Uh, all right. It's a long walk from where I had to shoot that. Oh, man. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Since you're here, I want to let you know about our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. TalonGunGrips.com. Check out everything they have over there. You can get lots of different grips, the stick-on grip textures for your handguns and rifle grips. So go check them out. Also, Ballastol, they're a firearms lubricant or anything else you might need lubricating. Uh, it's water soluble and non toxic. Been using it on the compound and cleaning all of our guns. It's a cleaner and a lube for over 10 years. So, Ballastol, Talon Grips, definitely check both of those companies out. And also, while you're on the internet, don't forget to go to Hickok45.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45, Twitter, Hickok45, Instagram, The Real Hickok45. And also, I have an Instagram page where I post behind the scenes stuff and different things like that. John, J O H N underscore H I C K O K 45 on Instagram. And uh, the next thing you have to do is watch more videos.